Let me think about this. AV consultants, technology managers, project managers, sales reps, AV sales engineers, AV designers slash engineers, AV technicians, AV installers, AV programmers, even integrator owners that do everything. These are all roles that end up engaging the end user during the course of a project. And these are also all roles that can help build the project scope of work, the guidelines that tell us what needs to be done for a project. And what makes this a little bit more nuanced is that the client isn't usually the true end user of a space, not the true end user. They're usually separated by whole departments or whole companies. And so as a commercial AV designer, what I want to learn is how to build a better scope of work from what I can control, my work, and the questions that I want answered. I hope everyone that we need is going to be here at the meeting today. We would like to have uh, representation, not just from the executive level or a managerial level in an AV department, but um, also representation from uh, people and end users that are going to be utilizing the spaces. Um, that's key because many times the people at um, uh, not the middle management, but more the people at the at the sea level, aren't always aware of uh, the technology that's required. They may not always be aware of the problems or difficulties that people that are um, actually maintaining and supporting the systems are are dealing with on a day to day basis, um, and they may not be aware of, of what the uh, the standards are that that those people working underneath them uh, have established, uh, if any, and what and why they have come to those those solutions uh, within that environment. So those people, um, uh, it's helpful if mechanical engineers uh, can be there, um, electrical engineers. Now, before we get started, let me turn off my phone. I've been on hold all night with this company. Just, they don't have a callback service, which is kind of annoying. And here, I thought you came with your own theme music. I'm glad we we're able to sit down and talk about this. Last night was not fun. Our CEO had a conference call with our branch in Asia. While the Zoom session ran great, she had a hard time with the audio in the room, and there was a lot of echo until everyone in the room muted their mic since they were all running separate Zoom sessions on their notebooks. We have been planning this upgrade for a while but I'm hoping we can accelerate our schedule and get things upgraded in here like some of our other spaces as soon as possible. Now, what questions do I want to ask? The first thing that I really need to find out is what is the client trying to use the technology to do? Um, I would say, you know, first and foremost, that that important factor there is is the functionality of the system. Like, how how does the end user want it to work? What do they want it to do? Uh, ultimately, you know, what is the end result that they have envisioned? And you know, honestly, sometimes the client doesn't really know what they want. And um, I, I think as a designer, that's part of the fun of it is um, is going through that process of of discovering what it is that we need the system to do. And I think it's important when you're first starting a design to stay, to take a really, really large step back. Look at the whole forest and figure out what they want this system to do. That's a big piece of information that doesn't always get conveyed, right? We can, we can talk all the legalese scope language that we want and this room should have this functionality, yada, 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 but having the knowledge of what the customer wants to walk into that room and physically do is very important. And you go in and talk to a client and say, what do you need? What, and they say, I need a projector and I need a screen and I need to, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to, even though it can be very hard for your clients sometimes, you have to go in and say, no, no, that's the equipment that goes in there. 
what do you need to do? What do you actually want to accomplish in this room? Are you sitting 25 people around this table every time? Or are, is it normally five? And once a year you have 24 people, but normally it's five and this is, so really understanding what are they trying to do in the room? Who's gonna use the room? How are they gonna use the room? Um, and the technology that people are gonna bring to the room is really the critical point. The second thing that I try, I like to try and find out is uh, what their budget is and you know when do they need the project accomplished by. A lot of that has to do, of course, with, um, it's sort of critical in terms of setting up user expectations. Key thing is, right, don't assume. And that's that's a regular trap. Um, and it's a trap, certainly, I, I would say, at least for myself, the more experienced I got, the more, uh, more of a trap there would be that I could say, oh, I saw, it. I've seen this thing before. I know what they want to do, right? You know, I got, I got it. You know, it really is a crucial thing to not assume that we know what it's, what it is, what, you know, what it's going to be, and that we um, interview them. We go through the multiple design, early design, programming development stages to to understand what they have, document that, repeat it back to them, change as needed, and then forward. Thanks. That is helpful. I have a couple ideas to work on now and we will get back to you with a design and proposal. The CEO will be able to walk into the space and have the system start up automatically and be able to get into a scheduled Zoom session seamlessly. And they should not have to worry about audio anymore. When your CEO and VPs walk out of this meeting room, the technology should not be the reason for any frowns. And if you don't mind, I'd like to stay a little longer and get some measurements and photos of the space. Unfortunately, photos aren't allowed, but we can send you over a floor plan of the space and feel free to take all the measurements you need. The space is open for another hour. I wanted to review and make sure I got all the dimensions I needed with my laser range finder and tape measure. I have the basic room dimensions, the distance of the table between all walls and the table dimensions, the window and door dimensions, credenza exterior and interior dimensions, ceiling and deck heights. Oh, and it looks like I missed getting measurements on locations of existing infrastructure, including power and data. Let me get those. Now, before I get out of here, I wanna make sure I put everything neatly back the way it was and just double check that I'm not leaving any of my things around. I have my phone, most important of all, and I have my notes and pen, my tweaker, my tape measure, my laser range finder, my wallabot to scan for studs and conduits behind the wall. I have my light sensor, an external phone mic to collect the ambient noise level in the space. I'm all good. You know, I probably need to review those questions that I asked. I asked a lot of questions. One led to the other. And let me think about them. We started off uh, by covering issues with Zoom, and then I started asking some baseline questions. What are you trying to achieve in the space? What are your expectations with the project? And then I dived into learning about the organization. Are you modeling this after other spaces? How does your support team manage the space currently? Are any networking or AV standard documents available? Are there any branding guidelines or UI templates used? Any information security hardware reviews required or InfoSec guidelines? And then I dived into asking about the end users. What type of meetings happen in the space? Who are the most common users of the space? How many people are in a typical meeting? Who schedules the space and how? What do users want to do in the space? What types of devices do users present with? And then I dived into setting expectations. What kind of timeline are you looking at? What is your budget? And then I did a little exploring. Are there any plans with upgrading furniture in the space? Are any other space upgrades planned like lighting? Can we cut into the furniture? Are there pathways to the table? Is trenching feasible? Are there any other pain points with the space? And where do we bring things in from? A freight elevator? Oh. 
And are any Zoom Room licenses available? Before I forget, I need to digitize my handwritten work. Now I'm finally ready to work on my scope on the project. Hmm, I like to kick off my work breakdown planning by estimating the project size and effort with a magic quadrant-like chart based on my experience, persona, and backlog of work. For this medium t-shirt size project, I see I have an opportunity to create a full design that could be a template to use for future projects as the client's needs aren't necessarily unique to them. This sounds fun and exciting. Now, I'm going to work on just planning my design tasks and not the entire project. I want to break down my tasks and share it with others so there is no confusion in what I'm doing and to improve collaboration in general with both my team and the client. So on the done side, I finished the needs analysis, room data collection, and sizing the project. In process is this work breakdown, and on my to-do list, I need to work on my handwritten sketch of the design or my napkin CAD. And the remaining to-do items are stories or to-dos that will have multiple tasks associated with them that I'll break down later. These stories include creating the Revit model of the space, a simplified wiring schematic, and ultimately the program document, which will include a narrative of the design scope and room functionality. And additionally, I'm always trying to document my concerns somewhere in writing. And for anything that I might think is overlooked or not discussed, I'll write it down so I can refer to it a little bit later in the project or when I'm doing my design work. It's time to dive into the design work. AV design is just the tip of the iceberg of all the roles that are out there in the commercial AV industry. And I also listed a bunch of roles at the beginning of the episode. So if you want to learn more about those roles, learn more about AV design, or just learn more about the commercial AV industry, then head over to avixa.org, A-V-I-X-A.org, the Audiovisual and Integrated Experience Association. They are the de facto organization you want to go to when you want to learn more about the commercial audiovisual industry. They provide both the training and the standards for the industry. I definitely use those standards. And of course, throughout this episode, I talked about design thinking and design process. And if you want to know more about that, there's a lot of resources there too. So besides uh, Avixa, which has scheduled webinars on design thinking, there's also manufacturers that provide training. Legrand, Legrand provides this great e-learning that covers design thinking and design process. And outside the AV industry, there's a lot of resources there too. Uh, my family recently took uh, Mark Rober's creative design and engineering class through monthly.com. It's a great four-week course. It was intense for me, but basically it covers Mark Rober's design process end-to-end. -end. It's really great. I recommend it. Thanks for watching. I'm always working on learning and making this video help me refine some of my processes. So hopefully it can help you as well. Feel free to comment below and I will try to incorporate some comments and suggestions into my next video. And don't forget to subscribe to get notifications of when my next video actually drops. Thanks.